Go is the language with automatic memory management. And while I have nothing against Go Garbage Collector, while it offers a huge convenience to developers, it simply cannot compete with the power and efficiency of manual memory management. In most cases, a Go developer does not need to care about that at all. And if you need a very memory efficient program, you would probably reach for languages like, I don't know, C or Zeek or Rust. But it's helpful to understand that you can also do it in Go. You can manually manage memory in Go. And maybe Go is not the best language to try that. But maybe there is some big program where everything is done by GC, or like all memory is managed by GC, but there is some small contained part where you want to kind of efficiently manually manage it. And again, it's important to understand that when you manage the memory yourself, you have to be careful because it's generally unsafe. You can get uh, kind of nasty bugs like use after free and so forth, which you usually won't get when you work with GC. As you probably know, there are a few configurations related to the work of GC in Go. For example, you can completely disable it, you can change the interval, you can also manually run the garbage collection cycle in your Go programs. I rarely use these configurations because in most of the cases I don't have to, but on this channel we are learning new things, so I want to do the following. I want to write a Go program and completely disable the Go garbage collector. Also, I want to manually manage the memory allocations using the tool called Gemalloc. Uh, you could use other tools as well. And I also want to visualize the difference. So let's do that and I hope it will be interesting. By the way, languages like Rust have been gaining the ground uh, partially because of their safe memory management. And I can completely emphasize with that. And if you want to learn Rust, the sponsor of this video, Let's Get Rusty, is the go-to place for both corporate and personal Rust training. They are laser-focused on Rust education and job placement, and they help thousands of developers learn and master Rust. They are actually running a new cohort next month, spots are limited, so now is the best time to check it out. Visit letsgetrusty.com slash startwithpackagemain to find out more about their training, or simply click on the link in the description below. Even if you haven't worked with C directly, you probably heard of functions such as calloc, malloc, and free for memory allocation. But it's important to know that there are other allocators as well, and one of them is gemalloc, is quite a popular one, and that's what we'll be using today. You can learn more about this gemalloc allocator at gemalloc.net. It's basically a general purpose uh, malloc implementation. It's been here for some time, so since 2005. Unfortunately, the GitHub project now is in public archive mode. I don't remember the exact reasons. I heard that it probably related something to Facebook, but let me know if I'm mistaken. Um, but as I mentioned, there are other allocators as well. We'll be using this because it's popular and actually quite performant. But before we allocate anything, let's actually measure the memory footprint of our program. And we could use the function from the runtime go package called uh, readmemstats. Um, right, readmemstats that returns us a nice object, so it's quite uh, helpful and a nice function. Unfortunately, it won't be very honest because what we want to measure is the OS level memory, or also called RSS or resident um, set size memory, I believe it's called, uh, that would contain both heap. Uh, go heap and also the gemalloc allocations. We could use another nice package which I used on this channel before called gopsutil that actually gives us a function to get the RSS uh, memory uh, usage of the given process. So we'll be using that. And so I created this stats.go file with a single function start RSS memory monitor. I didn't include the typing part this time. Maybe it's more for Twitch streams. Let me know in the comments if you want to see that. Should I type in these videos on YouTube? Should I do it separately? Um, but let me just explain you because it's quite a simple function. We get the process ID of the basically current process that we are running. And um, um, so we're using this gopsutil v3 process sub package, we pass it there, and then basically in a loop, each 100 milliseconds, we are fetching the RSS. So we do it from mem info, we take RSS, we divide it, divide it to get megabytes, and then I just print some bar. So let's say the 100 uh, megabytes is the maximum amount of memory because we are not going to uh, get bigger probably. 
and uh, yeah, we'll show some percentages here. So that's the function that we'll be calling, calling from our main.go, for example. And here is our main program. So in the function main, we call our function from the stats.go, we call it in a go routine, and then we call another function that does actually a lot of memory allocation. So we have some loop here, and what we do, we create the slice of bytes uh, with the size of 20 megabytes in the each iteration of this loop. Then it's also important to so-called touch the memory, right? So to actually make sure that the memory is used. So we could use something like a kind of fill our slide, uh, fill our slice with some data, and then we basically sleep for some time and set data to nil. So some people may think that at this point the memory is freed, which is not true because um, the actual memory will be freed by the Go garbage collector. So garbage collect collector will notice that the memory is not used anymore um, and will sweep it. I think there are two uh, steps in this process, but eventually it will be released. You kind of some sleep at the end just to make sure that Go garbage collector actually worked. So that's our very simple function. And now it's time to actually run this program. So that will be the first iteration. We'll run it with Go garbage collector. And as you can see, we see some memory, sometimes it's increasing, it starts small and then gets to some point, but as you can see, it's not getting to kind of outrageous amounts of memory, right? So let me kill that. And so we started very small, kind of some seven megabytes, then we got to 27, so I guess 20 additional, and we grew also slightly here, slightly there, but as you can see, Go Garbage Collector is doing its job and actually freeing some memory. Just to prove this point that Go Garbage Collector actually worked, we can run the same program, but with Go GC off, I believe. And see that each iteration, our memory grows, grows, and yeah, it doesn't fit this part, but it prints the actual amount, right? So there is nothing freeing this memory, and I want to stop that before my video crashes. Do you think we can do better in terms of memory management? I mean, not this variant, but when we had uh, GC on. So yeah, let's try to use Gemalog here. The first thing we need to do is to install Gemalog. Um, you can install it or build it from source. On uh, Mac or on Homebrew there is a formula for that, so we can copy this command and install it first. And now we also need to instruct Sigo, because that's what we'll be using. Uh, to know where to find gemalog. And we can export these two variables, sigo uh, cflex and sigo ldflex, where to basically find gemalog. Our next function is very similar to what we had before. I called it simulate gemalog. It does absolutely the same in terms of the functionality, so it also allocates the um, slice of bytes of the size 20 megabytes, though it uses the c.malloc. It's not the default one from the libc, it's actually from gemalog, and then we instruct our Sego to use this first, if it's able to find it, right? So that will be our gemalog call. Again, I mentioned previously that it's very unsafe generally to use Sego, especially working with memory, so we can fail here, for example. Another nasty thing we need to do is actually to create a go slice uh, pointing to the raw memory, so using, again, unsaved slice. Um, it's actually not that hard in this case because it's just a simple slice of bytes. It could be a little bit harder when we are working maybe with more complex data structures. And another big difference is that we actually free in the memory after use, and then we are setting our data to nil. Then we call this, actually not yet, so let's actually call it instead of simulate GC, um, let me command this out and do this instead. Great, so now we have another variant of this program, so let's run it and see how it performs. Go GC off again and run our program. And we see how nicely our memory works. So what happens is that, remember, we sleep for some time uh, before delocating or before freeing the memory, so that's why we kind of uh, do these cycles. There is always this seven megabytes, which is some probably uh, allocation from Gemalloc itself or from our GoPS util or something else, so because we are measuring the OS level memory, but that's expected. By the way, what's also nice is that we can 
still run this program with garbage collector on and we'll be still working and this way we can marry the both worlds of manual memory management and uh, garbage collected one. Again, I want to emphasize that manual memory management, especially in Go, is quite painful and also not very safe because, as we've seen, we need to cast uh, the variables to its kind of Go representation and we can hit all the bugs kind of use after free and so forth. Uh, but it's possible, right? So we learned that. There are quite a few articles that I read on this topic. One was a very, very nice article from dgraph, but unfortunately the kind of URL doesn't work anymore, but I'll share a few other links here. So that's the URL that I mentioned from the dgraph. Maybe it will get, uh, I don't know, published again at some point. But I remember it was linking to this repository of dgraph. They have this uh, package uh, restrator and there is a sub package called Z with different allocators. And you can enter here the whole world of allocators uh, with arenas and uh, pages and general allocators and kind of learn a little bit more here and also how they use it in Go. Apparently, dgraph is this database, or I guess it's a vector database that's written in Go. In some places, they need manual memory management, as probably it should be in databases, right? And that's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you later.